Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Varsha Williams and with me is VC Pramod with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says India's bioeconomy grown from 10 billion dollars to 80 billion dollars in last 8 years. inaugurates biotech startup expo 2022 in new delhi president ramnath kovind says a new era of higher education is flourishing in jammu and kashmir addresses annual convocation of iim at jammu election commission of india announces schedule for election of 16th president of india poll to be held on 18th of july polling for 16 seats of rajya sabha from four states to be held tomorrow six seats in maharashtra four each in rajasthan and karnataka along with two seats in haryana to go to polls india conveys its protest to pakistan over vandalization of hindu temple in karachi center advises states and union territories not to lower their guard against covid-19 pandemic Government launches Rashtriya Puraskar portal for inviting nominations for various awards of ministries departments and agencies to ensure transparency and public partnership in badminton India's eight shuttle PV Sindhu storms into quarter final at Indonesia Masters tournament in Jakarta and in T20 cricket inaugural encounter in five match series between India and South Africa underway in New Delhi Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that India's bio economy has grown eight times in the last eight years, and it has grown from 10 billion dollars to 80 billion dollars. Inaugurating the Biotech Startup Expo 2022 at Pragati Maidan in New Delhi today, Mr. Modi said India is not too far from reaching the league of top 10 countries in the global ecosystem of biotech. Mr. Modi said in the last eight years, the number of startups in the country has increased from a few hundred to 70,000 in about 60 different industries. He added that out of this, over 5,000 startups are linked to the biotech sector. आज अगर भारत को बायोटेक के क्षेत्र में अवसरों की भूमि माना जा रहा है, तो उसके अनेक कारणों में पांच बड़े कारण में देखता हूँ. पहला, diverse population, diverse climate zones. दूसरा भारत का टैलेंटेड ह्यूमन कैपिटल पूल तीसरा भारत में ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस के लिए बढ़ रहे प्रयास चौथा भारत में लगातार बढ़ रही बायो प्रोडक्ट्स की डिमांड पांचवा भारत के बायोटेक सेक्टर यानी आपकी सफलताओं का ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड When India is celebrating 75 years of independence the biotech sector will play a crucial role in adding pace to the development initiatives for the next 25 years the prime minister added saying that science and technology is now at the core of development across various sectors mr modi said the government's unprecedented investments in physical and digital infrastructure have provided a fillip to the biotech sector He said the center has started several initiatives to bring together the best minds in research and development which are leading to breakthroughs that are helping the development of science and technology. The prime minister said India has achieved the target of 10% ethanol blending in petrol and it has also reduced the target of blending 20% ethanol in petrol by 5 years from 2030 to 2025. Mr Modi also said the mantra of sabka saath sabka vikas is applicable to different sectors and now all sectors are being promoted in the whole of the government approach speaking on the occasion science and technology minister dr jitendra singh said the government is working for the next level of startup which are sustainable startups The union government has been moving forward with determination in the last 8 years not only to conserve the cultural heritage of India but also to spread its fragrance all over the world our correspondent reports that through opening up of the prime minister's museum bringing back stolen statues of antiquity from other countries and connecting various nations through indian handicrafts the government has been able to put india into a leading position among the committee of nations Oh 
India got the gift of modern museum in the form of Prime Minister's Museum. Located in the famous Teen Murthy complex of New Delhi, the museum was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on 14th April 2022. This अलग अलग आयाम रहे ये सब लोक स्मृति की चीजें In last 8 years the Modi government has taken strong steps to protect cultural heritage of India through the restoration of historical sites our heritage is being rejuvenated It is a result of the painstaking efforts of the government of India that from 2014 till now more than 200 priceless statues of antiquity have been successfully brought back to the nation Modi government is working to connect the people of other countries through rich traditional art Whenever PM Modi went on a foreign tour or any foreign guest came to meet the Prime Minister, he gave him or her some special gift. Underlining the important cultural linkage of Buddhism between India and Japan, PM Modi presented a sandalwood Buddha statue to Japan's Prime Minister reflecting the dynamism of Kashi. A pink enamel ship was presented by PM Modi to his Australian counterpart Scott Morrison. Due to all these efforts of the Modi government, today India is writing a new story of its success on the world stage. Anuj Sharma for AIR News, New Delhi. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, President Ramnath Kovind addressed the 5th Annual Convocation of the Indian Institute of Management in Jammu this evening. Speaking on the occasion, President Kovind said, A new era of higher education is flourishing in Jammu and Kashmir and education ecosystem is getting better. Urging students to positively contribute for the development of a stronger nation, the President said, Education sets mind and soul free from ignorance and negativity, adding youth are catalysts of future and stronger India. Commending girls for getting top three gold medals, Mr. Kovind said, India is moving forward with greater women empowerment. In the latest results of the civil services examination released recently, our daughters have captured the top three ranks. These uh, happy developments related to the excellence of our daughters indicate that India is moving not only towards greater women empowerment, but also towards women-led empowerment. I hope that each one of you who strive to make our nation proud and make positive contribution in the development of the society and the nation. A total of 214 students were conferred with a Master of Business Administration MBA degree this year. The main highlight of the convocation was that 77 female students were awarded the degrees. On this occasion, the President also inaugurated the diversity cell at IIM Jammu. He will also pay obeisance at the shrine of Sri Mata Vaishno Devi Ji tomorrow. Home Affairs and Cooperative Minister Amit Shah has said that the government under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi is working continuously to empower the cooperative sector with the mantra of Sehkar Se Samridhi. In a series of tweets today, Mr. Shah said the cooperative sector has immense potential for the development and empowerment of farmers, agriculture and rural areas of the country. He said in less than a year, Mr. Modi took many historic decisions for the cooperative sector, which was needed by this sector for a long time. Welcoming the RBI's decision for the cooperative sector, the minister said the limit of individual housing loan has been doubled for urban cooperative banks and rural cooperative banks. The Election Commission of India today announced the schedule for the election of the 16th President of India. Announcing the poll schedule in New Delhi today, Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar said the poll will be held on the 18th of July. Notification for the poll will be issued on the 15th of June and last date for filing of nominations will be the 29th of this month. Scrutiny of nomination papers will take place on the 30th of this month. The counting will be taken up on the 21st of July. The term of office of President Ramnath Kovind is ending on the 24th of next month. As per Article 62 of the Constitution of India, an election to fill the vacancy caused by the expiration of the term of office of the outgoing president is required to be completed before the expiration of the term, which in this case is 24th July 2022. Article 324 of the Constitution read
compared with the presidential and vice presidential election act the presidential and vice presidential election rules 1974 vests the superintendents direction and control of the conduct of election to the office of the president of india in the election commission of india and commission therefore as i said is fully geared up to discharge and perform this duty in a very very free and fair way During the biennial elections to the Rajya Sabha polling for 16 seats of the Rajya Sabha from four states will be held tomorrow the results will also be declared on the same day earlier 41 candidates were elected on a post from different states and subsequently the elections will now be held for only 16 seats including six seats in Maharashtra four each in Rajasthan and Karnataka along with two seats in Haryana In all 41 candidates were declared elected unopposed by the concerned state returning officers after the last date for withdrawal of candidature the newly elected candidates included 11 from Uttar Pradesh 6 from Tamil Nadu 5 from Bihar 4 from Andhra Pradesh 3 each from Madhya Pradesh and Odisha 2 each from Chhattisgarh Punjab Telangana and Jharkhand along with 1 from Uttarakhand In Rajasthan chief electoral officer Pravin Gupta said Polling will be held from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Counting of votes will start at 5 p.m. after polling. Retired IAS officer Ram Mohan Mishra has been appointed as special observer for the elections. Congress leaders Randeep Singh Surjewala, Mukul Vasnik and Pramod Tiwari are the party candidates for these elections, while BJP has fielded Ghanshyam Tiwari as its candidate. Media group owner Subhash Chandra is trying his luck as an independent candidate with the support of the BJP. In Maharashtra all preparations are in place for polling during biennial elections for 6 Rajya Sabha seats tomorrow for this election the Marxist Communist Party and the Socialist Party have decided to support the Mahavikas Aghadi for the 6 seats Shiv Sena has fielded two candidates Sanjay Raut and Sanjay Pawar while Prafull Patel of National Congress Party Imam Pratap Ghadi of Congress along with Bharatiya Janata Party's Piyush Goyal Anil Bonde and Dhananjay Mahadik are also in the fray Meanwhile a special court today refused temporary bail to NCP leader Nawab Malik and former state home minister Anil Deshmukh for a day to cast their votes in the Rajya Sabha elections scheduled to be held tomorrow. All the political parties fielding candidates for the four seats of Rajya Sabha from Karnataka have issued whip to their members of legislative assembly to vote during the biennial elections tomorrow there are six candidates in the fray for the four seats of the Rajya Sabha in Karnataka the BJP has fielded union finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman film star turned politician Jagdish and the outgoing member of legislative council Lehar Singh Siroya The opposition Congress has fielded former Minister Jairam Ramesh as their first candidate and Mansoor Ali Khan as their second candidate. The Janata Dal Secular has fielded Kupendra Reddy as its candidate. In Haryana, three candidates are in the fray for two Rajya Sabha seats from the state. The BJP has fielded Krishan Pawar and extended support to independent candidate Karthikeya Sharma, who also has the backing of the Jan Nayak Janata Party (JJP) and ally of the BJP. Ajay Makan is the Congress nominee for the Rajya Sabha elections from Haryana. In Assam, Jayanta Malla Barua and Nandita Garsola were sworn in today as the new ministers in the Council of Ministers headed by Chief Minister Himant Biswa Sharma. Assam Governor Professor Jagdish Mukhi administered the oath of office in secrecy to the new ministers during the swearing-in ceremony held at Shrimant Shankardeva International Auditorium in Guwahati. India will host the special ASEAN India Foreign Ministers meeting on the 16th and 17th of this month. Briefing media in New Delhi today, external affairs spokesman Arindam Bakshi said this will be the first meeting hosted by India in New Delhi and it will be accompanied by the 12th edition of the Delhi Dialogue. He said the theme of Delhi Dialogue is building bridges in the Indo-Pacific. The ministerial session will be attended by external affairs minister Dr. S J Shankar and ASEAN's ministers. Terming the ASEAN central to India's act east policy Mr Bakshi said ASEAN India foreign ministers meeting will mark the 30th anniversary of dialogue relations and the 10th anniversary of strategic partnership with ASEAN he said 2022 has been designated as the ASEAN India friendship year ASEAN India dialogue relations started with the establishment of sectoral partnerships in 1992 graduated to full dialogue partnership December 1995 
summit level partnership in 2002 and of course upgraded to strategic partnership in 2012. Today ASEAN India strategic partnership stands on a strong foundation. ASEAN is central to India's act east policy and its vision for the wider Indo-Pacific. This multifaceted partnership encompasses many sectoral dialogue mechanisms and working groups that meet regularly at various levels including annual summits, ministerial and senior official meetings. On the issue of border dispute with the Chinese side, Mr. Bakchi said India carefully monitors the developments along border areas, including construction of infrastructure by the Chinese side. He said government is committed to and takes all appropriate measures to safeguard territorial integrity and sovereignty. He said government has taken several measures to develop infrastructure in the border areas. India has conveyed its protest to the Pakistan government over the incident of vandalization of a Hindu temple in Karachi in Pakistan. Briefing media in New Delhi today, External Affairs Ministry spokesman Narendra Bhagji said India has noted the recent incident of vandalization of a Hindu temple in Karachi and India believes that it is another act of systemic persecution of religious minorities. He said India has conveyed its protest to the Pakistan government and urged them to ensure safety, security and well-being of its minority communities. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says India's bioeconomy grown from $10 billion to $80 billion in the last eight years. Inaugurates Biotech Startup Expo 2022 in New Delhi. President Ramnath Kovin says a new era of higher education is flourishing in Jammu and Kashmir addresses annual convocation of IIM at Jammu. Election Commission of India announces schedule for election of 16th President of India, poll to be held on the 18th of July. Polling for 16 seats of Rajya Sabha from four states to be held tomorrow, six seats in Maharashtra, four each in Rajasthan and Karnataka, along with two seats in Haryana to go to polls. India conveys its protest to Pakistan over vandalization of Hindu temple in Karachi. Centre advises states and union territories not to lower their guard against COVID-19 pandemic. Government launches Rashtriya Puraskar portal for inviting nominations for various awards of ministries, departments and agencies to ensure transparency and public partnership. In badminton, India's A shuttler PV Sindhu storms into quarter-final at Indonesia Masters Tournament in Jakarta. And in the first T20 cricket, India set a victory target of 212 runs for South Africa at the Arun Jaitley Stadium in Delhi. For quick news updates on the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख। आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय? आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प। और अब तो आप घर, दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे-बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग। आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों पर विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता। बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर। आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो। कंपटीशन के अगर आप कर रहे हैं तैयारी तो उनके लिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो पर हम लाए हैं अभ्यास एक ऐसा कार्यक्रम जिसमें आप पूछेंगे सवाल व्हाट्सएप नंबर 9289094044 पर या फिर ईमेल करेंगे abhyas.airnews@gmail.com पर और हमारे विशेषज्ञ देंगे इसका जवाब आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास जन जन कर भारत की सूरत बदली है कदम कदम पे जनता मोदी जी के साथ चली है आज साल में हमने संभव को संभव कर डाला है जब से उगे सूरज का देखो पश्चिम में भी उजाला है साथ गए अब दिन आएगा भी तो ये बस भोर है Welcome back to the evening news. The Health and Family Welfare Ministry has advised the states and union territories not to lower their guard against the COVID-19 pandemic. The statement has come in the wake of rising cases of COVID-19 in a few states and UTs. 
In a letter written to states and UT, Secretary of Health and Family Welfare Ministry Rajesh Bhushan said an upsurge of COVID cases has been noticed in the past two weeks. He advised the states and UTs to ensure a high level of testing in areas which are reporting new cases. They have also been advised to enhance monitoring of influenza-like illness and SARI cases in all health facilities on a regular basis for detecting early warning signals of the spread of infection. Over 194 crore 59 lakh vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. The health ministry said over 15 lakh 43 thousand doses were administered yesterday. The recovery rate is currently at 98.71 percent. The Department of Investment and Public Asset Management, Deepam, will organize a conference in 75 cities across the country tomorrow on the theme Creating Wealth Through Market. This initiative aims to educate, encourage and empower people about investments and creation of wealth to ensure financial growth of the citizens. Union Minister for Finance and Corporate Affairs Nirmala Sita Raman will join the conference from Indian Institute of Science, Bengaluru. Union Minister of State for Finance Dr. Bhagwat Karad will participate in the conference from Vigyan Bhavan in New Delhi. During the event, discussion will be held on topics including growth of Indian capital markets in the past 75 years, women as rising independent investors, financial literacy and future of Indian capital markets in the Amrit Kaal. The Union Government has launched the Rashtriya Puraskar portal for inviting nominations for various awards of the various ministries, departments and agencies to ensure transparency and public partnership. This common portal has been developed by the government to bring together all the awards under one digital platform. The portal aims to facilitate citizens to nominate individuals and organizations for various awards instituted by the government of India. The second edition of Awards for Excellence in District Skill Development Planning was organized in New Delhi today where top 30 districts were awarded for their innovative best practices in skill development in the region. Rajkot in Gujarat, Kasar in Assam and Satara in Maharashtra ranked top three among the participating districts. District collectors, district magistrates and other representatives from across 30 states attended the award ceremony and shared their ideas and experiences and presented the skill development work done at the grassroots level in their districts. Speaking on the occasion, Union Minister for Skill Development and Entrepreneurship Dharmendra Pradhan asked the district collectors, district magistrates and other officials to carry out demand mapping of the skilled workforce and drive awareness about skill development initiatives at the local level. In Jammu and Kashmir, the educational institutions across the Union Territory today observed two-minute silence in the memory of Rajni Bala, a teacher who was killed by terrorists in Kulgam district on the 31st of May. Our correspondent reports that the school children in the morning assembly observed two-minute silence to remember Rajni Bala and pay tributes on her 10th day. Talking to AIR, one of the students fondly remembers her earnest efforts for their betterment. उनका बिहेवियर बहुत अच्छा रहता था क्लासेस में भी टीचर्स के साथ भी वो बहुत अच्छा भी पढ़ाती थी और कभी भी टाइम वेस्ट नहीं करती थी हमेशा कहती थी आपका सिलेबस कंप्लीट होना चाहिए आप एग्जाम में अच्छे मार्क्स लाने चाहिए वो हमेशा इस बारे में हमसे बात भी करती थी कभी भी उधर इधर की बात नहीं करती थी रजनी मैम को भी हम जब भी याद करते हैं वो आज भी हमारे दिलों में जिंदा है हम उनको बहुत ज्यादा मिस करते हैं Earlier, the school education department yesterday ordered to observe a two-minute silence in the morning assembly in all the schools across the UT as a bid to mark the observance of the 10th day since the death of Rajni Bala. Rajni Bala hailed from Samba district in Jammu division and was posted in Government High School Gopalpura in Kulgam district. In a bid to pay respect to Rajni Bala, the UT administration has decided to name the Government High School in Gopalpura area of Kulgam after her. In Manipur, two underground cadres of proscribed insurgent group United National Liberation Front, UNLF, were apprehended during the search operations conducted at different areas, while one cadre of National Socialist Council of Nagaland, Unification, surrendered to Assam Rifles. A combined security force of Manipur police commandos and 31st Assam Rifles apprehended a cadre of the UNLF from Moirang Lamkhai area of Bishnupur district this morning. Meanwhile, a cadre of the band outfit NSCNU surrendered to Somsai Assam Rifles Battalion located in Ukrul district of Manipur yesterday. 
In the Kelo India Youth Games, Haryana retained the leading position in the medal tally with 33 gold, 27 silver and 36 bronze medals. Haryana has so far grabbed 96 medals. Maharashtra is following with 83 medals including 30 gold, 28 silver and 25 bronze. Manipur also retained third place with 13 gold, 3 silver and 2 bronze medals followed by Tamil Nadu which is at fourth place with 10 gold, 10 silver and 8 bronze medals. In Indonesia, Masters Badminton Tournament in Jakarta, India's ace shuttler P.V. Sindhu stormed into the women's singles quarterfinal, beating Indonesian Gregoria Mariska Tunjung by 23-21, 20-22, Earlier, India's ace shuttler Lakshya Sen also entered the men's singles quarterfinal. He defeated Rasmus Kemke of Denmark 21-18, 21-15 this morning. In cricket, the inaugural encounter of the five-match 2020 international series between India and South Africa is underway at Arundhati Stadium in Delhi. India set a victory target of 212 runs for South Africa, put into bat the host amassed a formidable 211 for the loss of four wickets in the stipulated 20 overs. For India opener Ishan Krishan made a quick-fire 76 runs. Earlier, the Proteas won the toss and elected to field. The visitors were 17 for nil in 1.4 overs when the reports last came in. The two teams will play subsequent matches in Katak on the 12th, Vishakhapatnam on 14th, Rajkot on the 17th and the last one in Bengaluru on the 19th of this month. The Sensex and the Nifty today witnessed gains even as the cues from global share markets were negative. A report from the business desk. The Sensex climbed 428 points to close at 55,320, while the Nifty added 122 points to finish at 16,478. In the Forex market, the rupee weakened 3 paise against the US dollar. The rupee closed at 77 rupees and 76 paise against the US currency. Gold was trading at 50,930 rupees per 10 grams. Silver prices also declined 200 rupees to 61,825 rupees per kilogram for July contracts and reports last came in. And in the intra the trade Brent crude was trading at around $123.50 per barrel. Nishit Kumar for AIR News. Now let us have a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National Capital Delhi will have a partly cloudy sky with possibility of development of thunder and lightning. Temperature will hover between 29 and 43 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have rain or thunder showers towards afternoon or evening. Temperature will hover between 29 and 34 degrees Chennai will have a partly cloudy sky. Kolkata will have a partly cloudy sky too. Srinagar will have a partly cloudy sky with one or two swells of rain or thunder showers. Jammu will have a mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night. Leh and Gilgit will have a generally cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Muzaffarabad will have a mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night. Hyderabad will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. Bengaluru and Tiruvananthapuram will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. In the northeast, Guwahati, Imphal, Shillong, Itanagar, Aizol, Gangtok, Agartala and Kohima will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says India's bioeconomy has grown from $10 billion to $80 billion in the last eight years, inaugurates Biotech Startup Expo 2022 in New Delhi. President Ramnath Kovind says a new era of higher education is flourishing in Jammu and Kashmir, addresses annual convocation of IIM at Jammu. Election Commission of India announces schedule for election of 16th President of India, poll to be held on 18th of July. Polling for 16 seats of Rajya Sabha from four states to be held tomorrow, six seats in Maharashtra, four each in Rajasthan and Karnataka, along with two seats in Haryana to go to polls. India conveys its protest to Pakistan over vandalization of Hindu temple in Karachi. Centre advises states and union territories not to lower their guard against COVID-19 pandemic. Government launches Rashtri Puraskar portal for inviting nominations for various awards of ministries, departments and agencies to ensure transparency and public partnership. In badminton, India's ace Shatla B.V. Sindhu storms into quarterfinal at Indonesia Masters Tournament in Jakarta. And in the first T20 cricket, India set a victory target of 212 runs for South Africa at Arun Jaitley Stadium in Delhi. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.
गरीबों का परिवार भारत सरकार देश के 9 करोड़ 17 लाख घरों को मिला गैस कनेक्शन 2 करोड़ 60 लाख घरों को मिले बिजली कनेक्शन 9 करोड़ 50 लाख से अधिक घरों तक पहुंचा नल से जल दुख दर्द को बहुत निकट से अनुभव किया एक परिवार के सदस्य के रूप में काम कर रहा आठ साल सेवा सुशासन गरीब कल्याण